A historical legacy can be counted in later times as a good thing or a bad thing. But the truth is, legacies in reality transcend the boundaries of time. We create them with or without our knowledge. Our words, our deeds, all pieced together will form the history we leave behind. They are shown, held, told, felt. They are memories we absentmindedly create for countless tomorrows. Legacies are roads left paid for those who will follow. They leave trails filled with reflective ideas. They are monumental, they are minimal, but they are never forgotten. The world isn't connected by molecules. It's connected by stories, traditions, memories, hopes, dreams. We are connected by the legacies passed down from those who came before us and the legacies we pass down to those who come after us. Leaving a legacy is a human need. It is in part selfish. We want to feel immortal. The idea of leaving something behind that will live forever is appealing. We also want to feel like we matter in the vast sea of humanity. We are all young and old, part of a large community. A community that must remember its history to build its future. Community exists before you are born and remains after you are gone. Through legacy and community, me becomes we. And all of us today have the opportunity to embark together as the we of Hope Center Church on the next phase of our journey to leave a legacy behind. We are all, every one of us, connected through a thread of history, weaving a tale that needs to be told, retold, and never forgotten. Within that thread, our apostolic heritage is one of those monumental legacies that has been passed on to us and must be preserved. In looking back on that thread, that heritage, we see the day of Pentecost, a legacy created and passed on to us. The early church was born of the water and of the spirit and offered its incredible legacy of grace and freedom to whosoever will. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the legacy continued. A young man named William J. Seymour, a son of former slaves, arrived in Los Angeles in February 1906, moving into the home of Edward Lee, a janitor at a local bank. Bishop Seymour began ministry with a small prayer group. As the group sought God for revival, their hunger intensified. On April 9, 1906, a powerful outpouring of miracles began. Many received the Holy Ghost baptism as Pentecostal revival arrived on the West Coast. Over the next few days of continuous outpouring, hundreds gathered and the streets were filled with those seeking. What began there became a powerhouse and streaked across America like fire, moving from California to Maine and back. And with that was continued the monumental thread of our legacy of truth. In 1952, Brother Joseph B. Twilley started a work in a tent down on Goliath Road. Later, he and several families established the Eastwood United Pentecostal Church. Two of those families, the Odoms and the Millums, are still represented in our church today. The pastorate of the church went to Brother Bill DeReese in 1966. In 1974, the church was moved to 209 Lemonwood Drive and became Castle Hill United Pentecostal Church. 
Brother Mike Chance became the pastor of Castle Hill UPC in 1983, and the congregation continued to grow. Outgrowing the building on Lemonwood Drive, the church built the present facility in 2000, moving in on Easter of that year, and it became House of Prayer Evangelism Center. In 2009, our present pastor and his family arrived on the scene. Since the arrival of the Scoggins family, a great deal of exciting things have happened. We changed the name and became Hope Center Church. Through our first capital stewardship campaign and the unity of the church body working together, the church was able to pay off $1.2 million in debt, becoming totally debt-free and remaining so today. once again created the need for new facilities we've been looking forward to this part of our journey for a long time we're excited to be on the verge of building our new sanctuary through unity and faith in an amazing god who has been with us every step of the way we believe that without a doubt great times and great growth are ahead